Hey everybody, welcome back to the Tea Table. I'm Michelle with Tea Time Creations. I thought I'd take just a minute to introduce myself. I haven't really been on camera too much uh, in my other videos. I don't really enjoy being in front of the camera in the spotlight, so you probably won't see me too much, but I did want to take a minute to say hello, let you know who I am. Tea Time Creations is my company. I do wedding rentals, event rentals, uh, do some other things besides soap making. Making is a large part of it, and uh, I've I've been making soap for um, probably, I don't know, five or six years now. Uh, the very first recipe that I made was a coconut milk recipe because I really didn't know any better. You know, I didn't know how difficult it was to make a soap uh, using a, a milk. I didn't have any problems with it. I loved making soap and from there I just started experimenting. Just the consistency between soap batter and you know cake batter or frosting and so I wanted to kind of push the envelope and see if there was a way to formulate a recipe put it in a piping bag and make it actually look like um, make the soap finished product look like a bakery product and I've done cakes and cupcakes I've done cannolis I've done high heel shoes I've done many different things using um, this basic recipe that I that I have it's a recipe that's worked well for me. You can use your own recipe. I recommend using as many hard oils as you can. Probably, um, I'd say my recipe is about 90% hard oils, but you want to stay probably over 70%, 60 to 70% hard oils. Otherwise, it's not going to reach the consistency uh, of piping, or it will, but it'll just take a little bit longer to set up. So when you formulate your recipe, just make sure that you use a combination of the majority of hard oils and then you can use some liquid oils as well. I decided to go ahead and film this basic video so that people can go back and reference it if they're getting lost in my videos uh, you know going forward on piping. So what I'll do is in the videos in the future I will just go ahead and already have my whipped soap made before I start filming and start piping on my cupcakes or whatever it is I'm, I want to be piping for the day and then if you have questions on how to make whip soap or the consistency that it should be then just go back and reference this video and it, hopefully it should answer some questions for you. I'm a little tired today so I'm drinking some coffee if you don't mind. I am a coffee and, and tea drinker both. Um, so just a quick note on um, mixers I have a KitchenAid. It's what I prefer to use. It doesn't mean that that's what you have to use. Uh, I believe that you could use a hand mixer, an electric hand mixer, uh, like a beater. Um, it might just take a little bit longer. I think that I've used it in the past, but I just prefer the KitchenAid. I use a six quart. I started with, uh, I think it was a four quart, and I found that I wanted something a little bit bigger so that I can make like a two pound batch. And again, it's just preference on what you decide to use. If you don't have the money for a KitchenAid, go ahead and start with a hand mixer. I found KitchenAids um, second hand at the thrift stores. I'm a big thrift store shopper because I do a lot of vintage items in my um, the other portion of my business. I will say that when I switched from a four quart to a six quart, uh, the, I, I got the six quart in the color pink because I like pink and um, it is a it says it's a professional 600 series I love the mixer, but the thing that I don't like about it is it's not a tilt back head and my four quart was a tilt back head and I will say that in my opinion I much prefer the tilt back head because when you're taking out your batter bowl, if the, t the head doesn't tilt back it can tend to be a little bit messy and I'll, I'll show you what I mean when we get started on filming, um, the, when we start whipping up the batch of soap. So um, without any further delay, let's go ahead and get started when making soap the most important thing yeah. in mind is your lye water temperature because it makes a huge difference on how quickly your soap will set I up. I like to cool my lye water down to between 60 and 70 degrees definitely under 70 degrees um, and for those people that already make soap you know it does take a while to cool lye water down. What I do is I don't really I sort of have a makeshift ice bath the bottom portion of an ice cream maker that I keep in my freezer 
at all times and so it's it stays cold and I just pull it out whenever I need it and I fill it up with with water and what I do is I use that for my ice water don't laugh at my pitcher this is what I use for my lye water because it's plastic I don't make lye water in glass I recommend that you do not mix your lye water in a glass container because it does have the potential of shattering at some point uh, the reason I use this pitcher is because it fits in my ice water bath container uh, it has a, the handle on it I have metal metal pitchers that I'll use sometimes um, but the the handle is enclosed here so it it doesn't sit all the way in my ice water bath and so that's why I use this ugly hideous pitcher <laughs> I have a few of them and I like them uh, with regard to water I've used both rain water and distilled water uh, I live on well and septic so I can't use tap water I don't think anybody can use tap water because of the minerals in the water Let's go ahead and get that started Prepare my lye water at 38% just because that's the default um, for the soap calculator that I use, which is soap calculator. The new one I got is Soap Maker 3, and then I'm still kind of playing around with it. And I think the um, default percentage is lower, but I just haven't put input this recipe into uh, so Soap Maker 3 yet. Um, I have found my recipe works fine with 38% water so if you want to do a water discount just go ahead and discount it. it it it's probably not going to affect your recipe too much other than the fact that it will set up faster my goggles on and my gloves on so I can measure my lye all right I'm going to use this uh, little mini mason jar to measure my lye just because I forgot to grab <clears throat> I forgot to grab the cup that I normally use and um, it is glass but I'm not adding water to it so I'm not concerned about it breaking. I'm not uh, going outside or worrying about fumes but if you're bothered by the fumes turn the fan on or go outside. Some people like to work over the stove when they're mixing their lye and use the ventilation fan on the stove. I just kind of stand back from when I've poured my pitcher and let it cool down a bit, or when I've poured the lye into the pitcher, um, just stand back so I don't directly inhale the fumes. We're at about 180 degrees right now, so it's pretty hot. I'm going to let it cool down just a little bit before I put it in my ice water bath because if I don't dissolve all the lye, then uh, there actually will be chunks. Like it'll start to freeze on the bottom before it's dissolved. And I don't want that. I've had that happen before where I've actually had my pitcher set in the ice bath and then poured the lye in um, and it just immediately froze on the bottom to a solid. Once the lye starts to dissolve in the water you can see it kind of goes from cloudy to more clear. And like I said this is really I'm only, it's such a small small amount of lye water that's going to cool down very quickly. Alright, into the ice bath that goes. I could take my gloves and goggles off for the time being while we mix up our oils. All right, I went ahead and measured out all of my oils. My lye water is still cooling in the bath, but it did already reach the 70 degree temperature. So I will leave it in for just a few more minutes to get a little bit below while we're mixing up our oils and then we'll um, be ready to pour it into our whipped soap. This is the KitchenAid bowl that I use um, and it has these little tabs on the ends 
And this is the difference between the um, drop down ball type and the tilt back head type. So you have to put these little tabs over the correct um, spot on the KitchenAid and they just kind of locks in place. This is what I'm talking about why I don't care for this part doesn't go up like my other one did. It's not a tilt head. And so when you have your bowl in, it's kind of hard to get the, the whisk part in. Um, it doesn't make too much of a difference before you put your lye water in, but after your soap is whipped, it's hard to get the bowl out. Um, this has got a little handle on the edge. If you can see it, that you turn to actually lift the bowl up to engage the mixer. Okay, put it down and then up. And that's how you engage the mixer. I, as I said, I just prefer, it's just a matter of you know what you like best, but I prefer the, the kind that this part tilts back. But I'm gonna go ahead and start whipping. With regard to your kitchen aid, when you turn it on, start off slow because this is a nice big bowl and I'm only working with a one pound recipe, but there are times that I work with bigger recipes and if, if you start turning your mixer on high right away, you're going to have a mess to deal with. Um, this is a, a very big bowl and like I said, I'm only dealing with a one pound recipe, so I don't have th that much of a risk in using the blender at high speed, but normally you're gonna wanna start off uh, on one of the lower speeds. Okay, and this is really a pretty nice consistency. lye water in so I'm going to go ahead and get my goggles back on and my gloves back on you always want to make sure that you are properly uh, protected if I were working with a larger batch of soap even I or more liquidy I even recommend I should have long sleeves on um, but I have the pitcher and everything set pretty far away from from me we yeah, are my water is actually very cool it's right around 50 degrees so we're definitely so, temperature wise and again remember stay under 70 degrees uh, for a better frosting a quicker frosting now it's important to pour your lye water in slowly as you blend because what's going to happen is, again, this is a small batch so we may not get it, but if I were to pour it all in, what you'll get is actually um, a, almost a bowl of frosting that separates from the metal bowl. So in theory, it could actually come up over the edge and slide out of the bowl. And I might if I might show you um, just to see if we can do it so you know what not to do. But let's start off real slow here and pour some water in. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, and normally I would not do this, is actually pour the rest of my lye water in so you can see uh, the effect that it has and so you'll know what to stay away from. All right, see how you have a chunk of it that is like a solid piece and it's just kind of moving around in the bowl like this you want to stay away from that because if potentially your bowl wasn't big enough it could slide over and it doesn't incorporate very well either see how how that slides right off but we still have some on the edge so we want to make sure that's all mixed in 
Um, you're not going to see how there's almost a quarter inch of a layer stuck to the bowl. You want to make sure that's all incorporated in your frosting. So that's why it's real important to make sure that you mix slowly. The length of time you have to mix is going to be dependent on your recipe and what oils you use. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on piping because um, well, at some point, it'll, this will harden up too much to put in the piping bags. And like I said, I, I only made a small batch, so I don't have a whole lot to work with here. All right, I had to take my gloves off for a minute because I couldn't get this bag, this piping bag, open with the gloves on. So these are not the normal piping bags that I use. Be, um, I just ordered these off the internet they're hard crinkly bags uh, they just they are what they are that's what I got so normally I pipe with silicone or a Wilton bag so fresh set of gloves on when you fill your piping bag sorry for the cr crinkly noise you want to Take your bag, the, the top part here, and flip it over. So you can actually hold the bag like that. Some people use a cup, like um, put it, put your piping bag in a cup, and then tip the edge over. I do that sometimes too. I just didn't happen to today because I'm only using one tip. I also did not put a coupler in because once again I'm just using one tip. I'm using the star tip today and it's the big star tip. Let's go ahead and fill our bag. Again, look at how thick this is. I mean, it takes a lot to get it off the spoon. I prefer the, I think it's a size 16, 16 inch bag. Um, I bought a box of Wilton bags at uh, Michael's and I, the, the clear plastic ones and I like them because they're not as noisy uh, but I find that the 12 inch really are too small for me because when you fill your bag up you want to be careful that the um, soap will seep out the top and this one actually probably filled a little bit high so you could probably seal this with the heat sealer. I don't have mine handy. Um, but you definitely twist the top because what happens is when you start squeezing, the soap will start coming out the top and then you'll just have a big mess on your hands. But here we go. I mean, this is the consistency. Look at how beautiful and detailed those lines are. They're nice, stiff lines. Okay, that's why I like this whipped frosting. And you can see here our final recipe as we're piping it onto the soap. The lines are very crisp and clean and it's just piping on wonderfully. Okay, so I went off camera and I finished piping some of the bars and the cupcakes that I had. But take a look at these two soaps, a side-by-side -side comparison. I use the exact same star tip on both of these soaps, but look at the texture on the tops. They're different. That's because the soap on the right, the prongs are more closely knit. They're put together closer than the one on the left. The tip on the left, I actually opened the prongs on the star tip just a little bit so that my soap would flow smoother through the opening. Um, so I thought that was just kind of neat to show you the difference between the two. So I've gone ahead and posted some more photos for you just so that you could see the different designs that can be achieved using this whipped soap. 
it's a kind of an amazing soap in my opinion. It does take a little bit more time to create these soaps, but I think that they're worth it in the end. I do these because I like doing them. Uh, it's a huge stress reliever for me to come up with these designs and pipe them and be creative. It does take my mind off of the problems throughout the day. I hope that it does the same for you. I hope you enjoy watching these videos and I hope that you are slowly learning the process of whipped soap. If you would like to continue to see these videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. That way you don't miss any videos. It does help me out. Go ahead and share this with your friends if you think that you know somebody who might be interested. Leave a comment below if you would um, have any questions that you would like for me to answer. I want to thank you for giving up your time this afternoon. I know everybody's time is valuable and it does take a, a you know, it takes a lot to come up with 20 minutes of free time to sit down and, and watch an amateur video. So I do appreciate it. And um, until next time, I'll see you guys at the tea table.